Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Franca Solida 1. It was made in Bayreuth, Germany by Franca Camera Work. Uh, started about 1952-1954 for this particular model. Uh, based on its body style, this one's probably from about 1956. Uh, it's hard to read, but it says Franca here and then made in Germany, US zone. So Bayreuth is here in Bavaria. It's folding viewfinder camera. It opens with the button on the photographer's left. The button may be on top depending on the vintage you get. Not counting the lens and shutter combinations, there are at least five different body styles labeled Solida 1. Uh, it folds with this button beneath the lens. You just have to make sure that your lens is set to infinity before you close it. I like that it's a horizontal folder. Um, it just, maybe growing up with SLRs and things like that, you know, it just feels a little more natural that, to me than something that opens this way. Uh, it takes uh, 12 6 by 6 centimeter uh, images on 120 film. There are actually a couple of different dual format versions of this. When I first read that I thought okay it has a mask for 6x6 and 6x4.5 but it's not. It's 6x6 or 4x4 like an image you would take on 127 film. It's kind of interesting. Um, the back opens with this slider. You lift it up and on this one, it's just under the bed release. Has nice hinged uh, roll holders. On the take-up side, you got to remember to lift this, and then you can flip that out and load your spools. It has nice rollers here where the film uh, crosses the film plane. It's not just you know smooth metal or a plastic curve or something. It has this indicator right here. When you wind it, a uh, little red shows up in that tiny little window. And your frame counter is a red window on the back. And it's got this little dot that lets you know when you've got the slider uh, closing that. So you just open it up long enough to read your frame number and then close the bad boy back up so you're not getting a light leak through there. There were several lens shutter combinations in this. I guess the most common was a Frank R. It's an Anastigmat 75 millimeter, and that came in four and a half, f four and a half, f 5.6, and f 6.3. And the most common shutters there's a Vario, a Pronto, and a Pronto or SVS. This one has. 7.5 centimeter, it's the way it's labeled, 75 millimeter, in a gone. Um, I read that it's a Cook triplet, three elements in three groups. And looking at light reflections in here, you do get three sets. So it's three lenses in some kind of a configuration. Uh, this one is in a Vero shutter. I haven't seen any references online to one that has this shutter. Um, it's four speeds. It has uh, one one twenty fifth, one fiftieth, one one hundredth, and one two hundredth plus bulb. Uh, I did read, just looking up the, the shutter, that it's a slightly simplified version of the Prontor. Um, this is an f three point five lens, and it stops all the way down to f thirty two. That's pretty amazing. Um, I did some flash photography with this, and if you stop it down to f32, you get some pretty fierce vignetting, as you can see in this image. There's no self-timer, but I'm fine with that. It's not a feature I use a great deal, unless it's how to get mirror lock up on an SLR or something, because really, in an old shutter, if something is going to break and just gum up the works, it's going to be the self-timer. So I don't really miss that. 
This has snapshot markings for the distance and the f-stop. They're marked in red. So the f-stops are marked at f8 to f11. So you just kind of put it right in there. And then on the focusing ring, it has red marks at 8 feet and 25 feet. So you, know, you can simplify it down to two zones. And then they say 1 50th of a second or 1 100th of a second. And then it's in snapshot mode. If you're you know, out in bright sunshine, you can really, if you're fairly close up, you use the 8 foot setting and you know, kind of far away to infinity. You set it to 25 feet and that's it. Then it's a point and shoot. It has a body mounted shutter button. And what that does is there's a linkage here, travels out, and then works the shutter button that's actually on the shutter. And by doing that, if you haven't wound, there's double exposure prevention. That's part of what the red dot is about. But you can override it, get cocked here, so we're not wound, so it's blocking the shutter button. If you're using a cable release, or it's a little hard to get to, but the shutter trigger that's on the shutter itself is down here. And I did not realize I was at such a slow speed. The speeds on this seem pretty good. Um, that's about it. Um, it has a pretty nice bright viewfinder, like a lot of old cameras. It's not real big. Um, it's just an accessory shoe. One of the dual format ones has the logo over here and the shoe is actually above the bump for the viewfinder. It's a cool camera. You know, I am finally getting a little bit better at zone focusing, kind of guess the distance. Not real great at it. But this thing is sharp enough that if I'm stopped down a little bit, if I didn't nail it just right, I'm still going to have a decent shot. So I'll probably load some color film in this next and I'll see you then.